All right, we'll be taking a closer look at the serialization system from last video. First of all, let's look at type info, the type info struct. And I've added four functions, well, STD functions. Um, one is a serializer, one is a binary serializer, one is a deserializer, and one is a binary deserializer. These functions take the address of a type and will either serialize or deserialize it to a stream. Now the first thing we should look at is these concepts. So here's the serializable concept, the streamable concept, the serializable binary concept, and this is just the type rate. Let's take a closer look at these concepts. So first of all, we have the outstreamable and instreamable. This checks for a function overload for the left shift operator that will put a value into stream. So these can be the normal uh, stream overloads that C++ has to output fundamental types or strings, for example. Then we have in serializable binary and out serializable binary. These are the same as before, but instead with serialized binary and deserialized binary. And here we check if both are valid. Deserialize, deserialize, serialized binary and deserialized binary functions are actually just checking if a function of this exists. So if a function that is called serialize, that takes a stream and takes an instance of type T. If this function exists, then it is serializable. So here are some examples of uh, serializable types that I created. And the reason I did it with a string is because JSON strings are normally surrounded with quotation marks, but in the normal C++ uh, stream overload, it does not output this. So this is why we created the serialize and deserialize function that will take, um, that will first put a quotation mark, then the string, and then another quotation mark to close it. Same with serialized binary and deserialized binary. Uh, these are special functions created to output a binary representation of a string, which is basically uh, you first output the size and then you output everything else that is contained in the string. And here we have some overloads for some other types, um, some containers, for example. And these are defined somewhere else in the program, but we have to declare them over here first so that they can be, be seen by these concepts. So let's go back to the type info struct. Um, so we check first if it's serializable. So if it's serializable, we um, set the function serializer as this. So this is a lambda that takes in the stream data and will first cast this data to a, a T pointer and then dereference that pointer and put it into the stream. We first check if it's serializable and then we check if it's streamable just so that we can override the C++ normal uh, streamable operators. Then we do the same for uh, the binary. When writing and reading binary, if it's a trivially copyable type, you can usually just uh, copy it. So read and write from the stream. But we also give an option to uh, override that functionality with serialized binary. And this will uh, and this will allow you to define your own binary serializers. Now let's have a look at the actual serialization process. So first of all, if we want to serialize a type, we give it a stream to serialize to and the data. It will then get the type ID of that data, of the type of that data, and we'll call this function. So using the address. The first thing that this function will do is get the type info. Then it will check if that type info has a serializer. If it does, then it will just serialize it to the stream. If it does not, and we open a bracket like in JSON, um, get all members, so member variables of that field, uh, run over those members, and get, well, first check if it's a reference or pointer. If it's not, um, then we stream it out. And here we take the offset, so void offset is just a uh, helper function that will um, get the offset of a void pointer. So it will add the offset of that member variable to the data that was given to us and serialize that using 
the type is also stored into um, member info struct. So this is a recursive function that will go into each member variable if it um, was not able to serialize it initially. Same with the deserializer, it first checks if it has a normal deserializer, if it does not, first get the name, uh, do some JSON things, then here at the end also check if it's a pointer or not, try to find the member info struct using that name, and then call the deserialize type function to uh, recurse to, to recurse into each member variable. The serialized type binary and deserialized type binary is just the same as the other uh, serialized functions, but it doesn't have the JSON syntax. So same thing. So let's take a closer look at the types again. So we have vectors, a quaternion, a transform which contains two vectors and a quaternion, a game object which contains a transform, a name, and a ID. Then a scene which contains a name, a vector of objects and an unordered map of objects. And then we also have a test class to test all the containers. So, um, first test we will serialize a game object. So what will happen? Well, game object does not have a serialize function. So it will check these members first. So it will go into name, deserialize that. String does have a serialize function. So it will take this and print it to the stream. Then it will take the ID, do it to the stream, and the transform. The transform does not have a serialized function, so it will look at the fields of it as well. And vector and quaternion, same deal. It will keep going into each member variable until it finds a thing that is serializable. And this, in, in this case, a float is serializable. So if we call this, It's a bit messy, but the transform contains translation, uh, which is a vector, and contains x, which is 35, y, which is 7, z, which is minus 34. Same with the rotation, which is a quaternion. Same with the scale, which is a vector, and then the name and id. Now let's take it one step further. We will first serialize the type, then serialize that type into another stream, and then deserialize that stream into uh, an empty game object and then we will we will serialize that empty game object that should be filled in with the same values as the original game object and see what the values are so here we go you can see it is serializable and deserializable back into a game object now this is the example from the previous video we just have a scene and the test class and see if it works so yeah, everything gets oh, serialized, deserialized, bi uh, serialized binary, deserialized binary, copied, and so on, and it all works. And if we want to define new functionality, we just go into the uh, place where all the functions are defined, um, add these definitions for a new type. This time we'll do std optional. Then we implement these functions somewhere else where it doesn't take up a lot of space. Okay, I quickly implemented them. So this will just check first if it has a value, print out a 0 or a 1, depending on if it has or not. And if it has, it will also stream out that um, the value inside. Same with the binary. It will print uh, the value of the boolean to the stream. And then um, in the deserializers, it will check if that boolean is there, and if it is, it will uh, read the rest of the data. So, new test class, test class 2, has an optional game object, optional scene, and another optional game object. Uh, we register the members, and then here in the test, we first, uh, the first optional game object, we emplace it. Then the optional scene, we also emplace it, uh, and then add an object. But the third one we don't in place, so this will have no value. Then we first serialize the first value and make a copy stream, uh, serialize this binary into the stream, 
uh, make a new object and deserialize that uh, stream into this new object. And we print out that new object. And let's see if it works. And yes, it does. Um, as you can see, exactly the same. Even at the end, you can see it, uh, this one wasn't has no value, and this one hasn't either. So that's how easy you can implement something with this serialization system. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.